Canadian Aboriginals continue a blockade protest against fracking operations by an American company on their lands despite a violent police crackdown. Canadian police in the eastern province of New Brunswick arrested about 40 people after they tried to dismantle a highway barricade. The protests turned violent and the demonstrators set several police vehicles on fire. The incident came in response to weeks-long protests by activists and locals. Earlier, they blocked a road near the town of Rexton to try to slow work by SWN Resources Canada. The firm is a subsidiary of Southwestern Energy Company. The energy company is exploring the coastal province for shale gas using a controversial practice known as hydraulic fracturing or fracking. Opponents of the shale gas sector say drinking water can be polluted during the extraction process. Let's find out more about this. Joshua Blakeney is our correspondent who joins us from uh, Calgary. Uh, well, uh, aside from the process itself as, of fracking, as it's called, uh, Joshua, that's controversial in itself. Uh, tell us uh, why the Can Canadian Aboriginals uh, are protesting this. Yes, hi, Kevin. What we're witnessing is a modern-day Indian war. Many people think Indian wars are a relic of the past, but in recent Canadian history, we've seen the Canadian state take up arms ruthlessly against Aboriginal peoples who are merely attempting to assert sovereignty over their historic territories. Canada does have a treaty system, and it does has historically treated natives on a na nation-to-nation uh, basis. 99% of Canada, of course, is already has already been taken from Aboriginals, and resource companies have uh, access to, to that 99% of Canada's resources. <clears throat> but this uh, Houston-based uh, resource company wants to encroach onto uh, the historic territories, the sovereign territories of the Mi'kmaq Nation, and they're not having it. And the Supreme Court Law of Canada does uh, uphold Aboriginal and treaty rights in Section 35, so the Indigenous peoples are claiming that they're merely uh, seeking to affirm the supreme law of Canada, which supersedes all other laws, and that the Harper government, Canada's ruling neoconservatives, are in fact the ones who are violating the law of Canada by uh, acquiescing to the interests of resource companies who, as I say, have access to all of Canada, but who also want access to indigenous territories. From the perspective of First Nations, this is their nation, this is their territory, which they have sovereignty over. Uh, so the response has been pretty brutal. We've seen the police uh, go in in military garb, black clad, uh, you know, gun toting, uh, pointing guns at children and elders. Uh, we've also seen on our television screens, which you alluded to, uh, burning police cars. And I think uh, Press TV viewers ought to be skeptical of this because we've seen in the past the police employing false flag uh, 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 operations and infiltrating protest movements with Asian provocateurs in order to uh, discredit them. I mentioned the phenomenon of Indian wars in Canada. In 1995, in British Columbia, there was a modern-day Indian war in Gufterson Lake, and a, a video was leaked of a police officer saying, we better secure some journalists to help us with our, quote, disinformation and smear campaign, as if that's something you learn in police college. We saw again in the G20 protests on our screens a burning police car, and that was used to justify in 2010, the police's uh, brutal and authoritarian crackdown on protesters at the G20 protests in Toronto. And yet again, we see, you know, not the legitimate uh, legal concerns of First Nations peoples being discussed in the Canadian media, but rather the fact that there's some police cars burning. Um, we've seen it, it, Canada's ruling neoconservatives seeking to pass legislation to create a category of Canadians called eco-terrorists. So people who try to stand up for the environment and for Aboriginal rights are now being lumped together in this kind of discourse of the war on terror, which of course is based on the fictitious interpretation of 9-11, which has altered Canada radically. So we see an attempt, rather than to address the legitimate legal claims of First Nations peoples to portray them as terrorists and as uh, reprobates, when in fact it appears that the Canadian authorities, the Canadian police themselves, are enforcing uh, illegal claims that violate the supreme law of Canada, which is enshrined in Section 35 of but, the Canadian Constitution. Well, as you mentioned, Joshua, uh, they have a legal claim to this. Uh, the Canada Aboriginals, uh, Section 35 of the Supreme Court of Canada dictates that. But I'm guessing that these companies like SWN Resources Canada has lots of money. Why don't they just settle or try to settle uh, with these uh, Canadian aboriginals? Is that something that they've even attempted to do? Well, that, that I think is the preference of resource companies is to kind of co-opt or buy off uh, uh, aboriginal tribes. But some of them are, are more principled and say, well, look, we could get good money for our people by bringing you in, but then our waters and our lands might become poisoned. And I gather the Mi'kmaq people are saying, well, unfortunately, fracking, one of the side effects sometimes is the poisoning of water, and therefore weighing up the pros and cons, we don't want you to come to our territory. So the resource companies, their plan A is to just buy off 
indigenous leaders, whether it be in Canada or around the world, they always try and buy off uh, the indigenous peoples uh, in order to gain access to their resources. But in the case of the Mi'kmaq, they're saying, well, actually, our water, where our fish run, which is part of our culture, is more important than having, um, having a cut of the profits of the fracking operation. And so now that's led, obviously, the resource company to turn to the Harper government, turn to um, Canada's authorities in order to uh, force the native peoples to acquiesce. And so, I, as I said, I think people should be skeptical of these claims that there's been violence on the part of Aboriginals. There's a long history in Canada of the police infiltrating protest movements with Asian provocateurs in order to create violence, to deflect attention from the legitimate legal claims uh, that Canadian First Nations are making. Thank you very much for Calgary. Joshua Blakeney there. Thank you. France is witnessing a hostage drama as an armed man is holding two people in a bank in the capital, Paris. Police say the man entered a branch of the CIC bank in Paris and is now demanding a negotiator. They say the gunman first took four people hostage, but later released two of them. Reports say that that took place after...